everyone, how's it going? My name is Monica and welcome to Comic Cat Creations. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I made this wrap dress with the spaghetti straps and the high-low hem. I love this dress for summer, so I really hope you have fun making one too. If you do enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up and I would love it if you'd subscribe to my channel if you haven't already so you join this fun little sewing community we have. And what are we waiting for? Let's go ahead and get into the tutorial. To make this dress, you'll need a four-way stretch knit fabric, which is important to use for this project, and a fitted spaghetti strap tank top for a template. And I'll list all the sewing supplies you'll need in the video's description, so make sure to check that out. And this is going to be a project I'd recommend for those of you who have some experience sewing and are ready for something a little more involved than some of my other tutorials. To begin, find the point where the tank top hits you at your natural waist and fold all the fabric below that point up out of the way so it looks like a crop top. Then fold the straps down so they're no longer visible, and finally fold it in half right down the center, and we'll use this to cut out our back bodice piece. Fold a portion of your fabric over a little wider than the tank top and pin the top onto the fold. Even though it has a curved neckline, we'll be cutting a straight neckline for the back of the dress, so cut in a straight line across to the top of the tank top like this. Then cut right along the curve of the armhole. Cut a half inch larger to add seam allowance along the side and bottom edge, and now you have the back bodice piece cut out. We have to cut out the two front bodice pieces next, which are each shaped like this to form the v-neck when the dress is wrapped around you. To cut one of them out, lay the back bodice piece onto a single layer of fabric and cut along one armhole, down that side, and across the bottom edge. When you get to the other side, cut only a couple inches up, stopping about where the side of the bodice would hit you just underneath your bust. Then fold that back bodice piece down out of the way and cut out the front neckline by cutting in a gentle curve up to the opposite armhole just like this. You'll now have one of the front bodice pieces cut out, so pin it right sides together on another layer of fabric and cut around it so now you have both front bodice pieces cut out. Lay them back together, and since we're using fabric that stretches so much, I like to trim about an inch off of these shorter sides. If I don't do this, I find that when the dress is wrapped around me, there can be a little too much fabric on the sides, which can get in the way when tying the dress. Turn one of the pieces wrong side up and hem the short edge by double folding it a half inch at a time, pinning it, and sewing it down. Since we're using stretch fabric, use a ballpoint needle and sew all your seams and hems with either a stretch or a zigzag stitch, which allows the seams to stretch without breaking. A lot of times when I'm sewing on different knits, one stitch may work better for a seam and one may work better for a hem, so I always like to test a few stitches on a scrap hem and scrap seam to see what works best for each, and this decorative looking stretch stitch worked great for my hems. Then hem that short edge on the other front bodice piece too. Next, we'll be making fabric bindings that will go around the necklines and armholes and will also form the dress's ties and straps, and we'll start this on the top edge of the back bodice piece. Cut a strip of fabric that's about an inch longer than that top edge by two and a half inches wide and flip everything so the wrong sides are up. Lay the strip onto the top edge so there's a little extra hanging past both sides, and pin and sew using a half inch seam allowance for all your seams. When I was trying different stitches out on a scrap of my fabric, the triple stretch stitch worked really great for my seams, so that's what I use for all the seams on this dress. When you're done, turn the bodice right side up. Bring the strip up so it sits above the bodice, and hold the seam allowance in place on top of it. Fold the top of the strip down about a half inch, then fold it down again so it covers up the seam allowance and stitches completely and pin it down. Then continue holding that seam allowance in place and double folding the strip down along the whole top edge, smoothing out each section as you go so the binding lays neatly. Sew close to this bottom folded edge to secure it, and every time I sew the binding to the front like this, I use the same stitch I used for my hems, and now you have a nicely finished edge. 
Trim the extra binding off so it lines up with the armholes, then grab one of the front bodice pieces, and the bindings we'll be putting along the front necklines will actually extend past the sides to form the dress's ties. To see how big to cut those bindings, first measure along the neckline and write that number down. Then, to see how long the ties need to be, take one and a half times your waist measurement, and this will just ensure that the ties won't be too short. Add those two measurements together and cut out two strips that are that number long by two and a half inches wide. With the wrong sides up, place one of the strips starting at the top of the neckline and pin it down along the curve, making sure the strip is nice and taut as you pin it because if it's really loose, the final binding won't lay as neatly around the curve. Sew along the neckline to attach the strip, turn the bodice right side up, and bring the strip up above the bodice. Just like we did for the back neckline, hold the seam allowance in place, Fold the top of the strip down about a half inch, then fold it down again so it covers up the stitches. Continue doing this all the way down the neckline, always smoothing out the binding so it lays super smooth around the curve. When you get to the extra fabric for the tie, fold its bottom edge up a half inch, fold the top edge down a half inch, and fold it down one more time so you have a seamless transition from the binding to the tie. Keep folding and pinning those edges together along the whole length of the strip to form the tie, and when you're done, sew down the neckline and across the tie to secure it all. Trim the edge so it lines up with the armhole, and then attach the binding and tie to the other front bodice piece the same way. Lay the bodice pieces across from each other to make the final bindings, which will go around the armholes and form the straps between them. Decide how long you want your straps to be and leave a gap between the bodices that are that size. My straps are going to be 9 inches long. To see how big to cut the bindings, measure along that whole distance and cut out two strips that are that number long by 2.5 inches wide. Turn everything wrong side up and pin one of the strips along one of the armholes, again making sure the strip is nice and taut as you pin for the best results. Measure out the size you want the strap to be and then pin the rest of the strip down the opposite armhole. Move the bodice piece you're not working on out of the way and sew along both armholes to attach the strip, then turn it so the right sides are up. Bring the strip around so that you can double fold it around the armhole just like we've done before, and since it's such a sharp curve, it helps to pin it down frequently to get it to stay. We'll make the strap like we made the tie earlier by folding the bottom edge up a half inch, folding the top edge down a half inch, and folding it down one more time so you can pin the edges together to form the strap. Double fold the rest of the binding down the other armhole and sew to secure it all, then lay the other front bodice piece down and attach the binding and strap to it too. Bring one of the front bodice pieces over onto the back piece so the right sides are facing together and make sure the strap isn't twisted before pinning and sewing that side together. Move that front piece over so you can lay the other front piece down too, but when we sew this side together, we actually have to leave a gap in the stitches which one of the ties will go through to tie the dress. To see where to leave that gap, bring the front piece you just sewed back down and see where its tie meets the side, then use a double set of pins to mark just above and just below the tie. Sew along that side to join the pieces, stopping where you mark to leave the gap in the stitches. Now that the bodice is sewn, open it up and measure along its waist to see how big the skirt's waist needs to be, then add one inch for hem allowance. I got 46 and a half inches for this. The skirt is made from a half circle shape and we have to do a couple quick calculations to cut it out. First, divide the number you just got by 3.14. I got about 14.8. Then subtract a half inch from that number which builds in seam allowance to the waist and the number you get will be used to draw the waist of the skirt. I got 14.3 inches total. Fold the longest side of your fabric in half and make sure this top edge is cut in a straight line so you have a perfect right angle at the corner. Measure from that corner and make a mark at the number you just got, then swivel the tape measure down a little and make another mark at that number. 
Keep measuring and marking all the way down the fabric to create a quarter circle shape, then connect the marks and cut along the curve to cut out the waist. Now decide how long you want the back of the skirt to be, which is the longest part of the skirt, and add one inch for hem and seam allowance. With the amount of fabric I had left, I was able to make my skirt about 27 inches long, but if you get extra fabric, you should be able to make yours longer if you wanted to. Measure from the curve of the waist and make a mark at that length, then move the tape measure down the curve a little at a time and keep making more marks at that same length. Now even though it's going to be a high-low skirt, we're measuring it all at the same length first because I find it easiest to cut the front shorter after we can wrap the skirt around us so that we get the perfect shape. Connect those marks and cut along the curve so you'll have a large half-circle shape cut out. Fold it in half, and to make the high-low hem, we'll be cutting that straight edge off and making a curved line similar to this instead. To do that, start cutting right where the waist ends and cut a gentle curve away from the straight edge, cutting the curve a little sharper when you get near the bottom edge so it blends right into the bottom of the skirt. I really recommend cutting only a little off at a time as you do this, and then wrap the skirt around you to see if you like the shape. You can't really see the high-low hem on mine yet, so I folded it back in half and cut in that same general shape to cut a couple more inches from the fabric. When I wrapped it around me again, you could see the high-low shape better, but I wanted more contrast from the back to the front, so I trimmed the skirt down one more time and was really happy with the shape. When you're done, the skirt will look something like this, and the next step will be to hem the outside curved edge if needed. I decided to skip hemming mine, which I rarely do, because I just loved the way the fabric flowed, so I checked to make sure it wouldn't fray by washing and drying a piece and stretching the edges, and it kept a nice clean cut. If yours showed any signs of fraying or unraveling, though, you would need to hem it, which I would typically do on such a large hem by double folding the edges a quarter inch at a time, smoothing them out so they lay flat around the curves, and sewing them down. To attach the skirt and bodice, use a straight pin to mark the very center of your skirt's waist and bodice's waist. Lay the pieces right sides together, line up those center points, and pin them together. Then work from the center outward to pin the rest of the waist together, and make sure to open up and flatten out the bodice's seam allowance when pinning. Since I skipped hemming my skirt, it was a little longer than the bodice, but I'll trim that down shortly. Finish pinning the waist together, and when you're done, sew to attach the pieces. And now, since the skirt was wider, I trimmed the edges so they lined up with the sides of the bodice. Next, wrap the dress around you by feeding your tie up through the gap you left in the side seam and pull it closed. Wrap the opposite side around you too, and you can either tie the ties into a bow right on the side, or for extra security, wrap them around your waist once first and then tie them, which is how I like to wear it. If your ties are too long, trim them down and then finish their edges by double folding them and sewing them down. And now you have a fun flowy wrap dress. Thank y'all so much for watching. I made this high-low top. Top? I just hit the leaf when I was talking. Nice. Wait, that was not what I was supposed to say at all.